Hey guys, it's Steve here from CG Geek with a new video on helping you decide what the best GPU for Blender is. So up until recently, NVIDIA was the only option, but now with some new Blender updates, we have OpenCL integration. So that means you can use AMD video cards in Blender for rendering. And thanks to AMD, I have the new Radeon Pro Duo here, and I'm gonna be benchmarking it and seeing how it handles Blender and rendering. So first off, the Radeon Pro Duo retails for around a thousand bucks and is essentially two Radeon WX 7100s combined into one card. So with each chip being 16 gigabytes of VRAM, that's a combined 32 gigabytes of VRAM. So that is amazing for rendering. You can do complex scenes and uh, you'll have no problem rendering them on your GPU. So with 16 gigabytes of VRAM per chip, a thousand bucks is actually a really great price for this GPU. If you wanted to get something with 16 gigabytes from Nvidia, you're gonna be looking at at least $2,000 or more. So that brings me to the point of what are you gonna be using your GPU for mainly? If you're rendering all kinds of complex scenes with high quality textures and stuff, you're definitely gonna want a GPU of this quality with that much VRAM. But if you only use Blender a little bit and you mainly game or something, this is definitely not a gaming card, it's a professional card. But if you're like me and you like to kick back and game a little bit in the evening sometimes, you might be wondering if the Radeon Pro Duo can handle modern games. And I was wondering the same thing. So I did run a few gaming benchmarks and I'll include them at the end of the video so you guys can check that out. So don't get the Radeon Pro Duo confused with the new Vega GPUs. I haven't gotten a chance to test the Vega GPUs, but they look good. They look like they're going to be rendering a bit better than the 1080 like I have right now, but it's still limited to 8 gigabytes of VRAM, so you won't be able to render anything more complex with Vega than you could with the GTX 1080, for example. And if you're looking to get a new GPU for Blender, I've included a handful of links in the description of different GPUs that I consider to be the best price to performance um, in different price ranges. So if you're interested in a new GPU, uh, definitely check out some of my suggestions in the description and maybe one of them will be what you're looking for. Also, one more thing I want to mention in the benchmarks is I did overclock the Radeon Pro Duo and my GTX 1080s a little bit, uh, about 200 megahertz on the core and 400 megahertz on the memory. So it does overclock pretty decently, just about as good Good as Nvidia's cards do and uh, so I was happy to see that so just so you guys know they're all overclocked a little bit so this is kind of the best performance you could get out of the cards okay so on to the blender benchmarks I'm using the release candidate for blender 2.79 and up until this point OpenCL has actually been getting faster and improving to this point so it's possible that it could get even better with some future updates but right now it's looking quite quite good so let's uh, let's take a look at some of these benchmarks and see how it compares to the competition. <laughs> okay, so onto the first Blender benchmark, which has become one of the most popular Blender benchmarks, and that is the classroom scene. This is great because there's all kinds of geometry and light bounces, and it's just a great benchmark. Um, okay, so the Radeon Pro Duo comes in at about 3 minutes and 25 seconds, so I was really impressed with how it handled this scene, and that was a really great score. My single GTX 1080 renders it at about 6 minutes and 27 seconds where two GTX 1080s render it at about 3 minutes and 22 seconds, which is barely ahead of the Radeon Pro Duo with two GPUs. Now I was also curious what the GTX 1080 Ti does for a scene like this. So Andrew Price um, from Blender Guru actually just got two 1080 Ti's, and uh, so I was able to look at his scores and kind of compare them. So two GTX 1080 Ti's renders this scene at about 2 minutes and 31 seconds, and one GTX 1080i 1080i uh, renders at about approximately 4 minutes and 57 seconds, give or take a little bit. So um, about 20% faster, I'd say, than my GTX 1080s for the 1080Ti version, but you're probably paying at least 20% more for that, so you kind of get what you pay for in this case. Okay, so on to the Fishy Cat benchmark. This was a splash screen for Blender a few releases ago, and uh, this has a lot of hair particles in it. So this is a good scene to test the GPU just to make sure that it renders hair particles well. And again, the Radiant Pro Duo did this very well in 3 minutes and 25 seconds, whereas a single GTX 1080 rendered it in 6 minutes and 5 seconds, and two GTX 1080s rendered it in 3 minutes and 14 seconds. Okay, so on to the next benchmark, which is probably the most commonly used Blender benchmark ever. It's getting a little outdated now, but I figured I'd still include it for you guys, and that is the BMW benchmark scene by Mike Pan. 
and uh, the Radiant Pro Duo renders this in 1 minute and 41 seconds. A single GTX 1080 renders it in 2 minutes and 36 seconds, and two GTX 1080s render it in about 1 minute and 26 seconds. And I wanted to benchmark that included some more complex materials like subsurface scattering. So I'm using the Ice Cream benchmark, which is from a few Blender releases ago again. It was a splash screen back then. And uh, this one includes a lot of subsurface scattering. So I thought it would be a good scene to uh, include. And the Radiant Pro Duo renders this in 3 minutes and 52 seconds. Whereas the GTX 1080 renders it in 6 minutes and 8 seconds. And two GTX 1080s render it in 3 minutes and 44 seconds. So again, two GTX 1080s together only come in a hair above the Radiant Pro Duo. And then to render a really complex scene, I have the Harvester scene from Hamza Shigur. He was generous enough to give me the scene as a benchmark to see how the Radiant Pro Duo handles it. This is a very complex scene at a high resolution with lots of geometry. And the Radiant Pro Duo rendered this scene in 14 minutes and 31 seconds. Whereas two GTX 1080s rendered it in 12 minutes and 40 seconds. So about the same percentage increase even in that scene. So now on to the most difficult benchmark yet, and that is the Gooseberry Benchmark. So this is an actual production-ready benchmark. This was a scene taken straight out of the short film created in Blender, and this includes all kinds of high-quality textures and advanced hair particles. So it's really putting the GPUs to the test, and the Radiant Pro Duo rendered this scene in 18 minutes and 31 seconds, whereas the GTX 1080, well, I couldn't even render the scene on it because it couldn't fit all of the textures and geometry, into the video card memory due to the lack of only eight gigabytes of memory. So this is where you can see that a professional card is needed if you're doing actual professional work. If you're rendering something that's advanced like a short film and you're including all kinds of hair particles and stuff, you will likely need a professional card like the Radiant Pro Duo for example to be able to render it on your GPU. Otherwise you're going to be stuck rendering on your CPU and you're going to be waiting a long time. So another advantage of having more VRAM like the Radiant Pro Duo is you can take scenes like my Starter Story project, for example, and I can increase the resolution all the way up to 150%, getting a much higher quality render with more subdivisions and detail in it due to the micro displacements, and have it much higher quality and still be able to render it on my GPU. Whereas with the GTX 1080, I hit a limit right away where I can't go any further because I'm running out of video RAM. So this is a great example of why you need more video RAM for higher quality renders and more details. So another benchmark I want to include is actually one for AMD's new Radiant Pro renderer. This is a whole new render engine that's been built and it is already working completely in Blender. I'm planning on possibly doing a video on this new render engine in the future, so stay tuned for that. But for now I just grabbed the Classroom benchmark which has been converted to work with the Radiant Pro renderer and I benchmarked the Radiant Pro Duo. So the Radiant Pro Duo, using AMD's Pro Renderer, rendered the classroom scene in 10 minutes and 26 seconds. Whereas a GTX 1080 did it in 11 minutes and 26 seconds. So actually, Nvidia's cards work very well with the AMD Pro Renderer as well. And two GTX 1080s did it in 6 minutes and 21 seconds. Another really cool feature though with the new Radiant Pro Render is that you can actually combine NVIDIA and AMD GPUs and render with both of them. So I was able to take a GTX 1080 and render it with the Radiant Pro Duo and I got to a score of 6 minutes and 18 seconds. So the fastest score was actually combining the Radiant Pro Duo with the GTX 1080. So that's really cool. I like that you can use both an AMD GPU and an NVIDIA GPU in the same render engine rendering the same scene at the same time. That's just Awesome. So for the final Blender benchmark, I was curious to see how the Radiant Pro Duo would handle a new feature that's coming to Blender 2.8, and that is the EV Real-Time Blender Render Engine. It's essentially a real-time render engine that's coming to Blender where you can basically work on your projects in real-time, very similar to something like a game engine renderer. So I knew that the Radiant Pro Duo wouldn't handle it quite as well as a GTX 1080, because the GTX 1080 is built more for gaming, whereas the Radiant Pro Duo is built more for rendering. So I'd like to thank Zach for sending me this scene and allowing me to benchmark it and include it into this video. And here is my results. The Radiant Pro Duo had a real-time FPS playing this animation through of 6.5 FPS, whereas a GTX 1080 got 23, 24 FPS real-time. So here's where you can see that if you're a game developer or you mostly play games, you are going to get much better results using a gaming card and not a professional card. 
This card is way more designed for rendering and not the real-time game engine renderers like Eevee, for example. So this brings me to the end where I promised I'd include a few gaming benchmarks. So I benchmarked Call of Duty Black Ops 3, and this game, while screen recording, played perfectly smoothly at 1080p. I was getting 100 plus FPS the whole time, and I was perfectly gameable. Perfectly gamingable. It was very gameable. <laughs> So the card is still definitely capable of gaming if you game a little bit on the side. It's not like you're going to need a separate card just for that. Unless you're doing something crazy like 4K gaming, then you might need more of a gaming card. But it is still capable of doing some games, so that's good. So another thing that really impressed me with the Radeon Pro Duo is it has a top power draw, just 250 watts, which for two GPUs is really impressive, and compared to my GTX 1080s, they combined draw about 360 watts, so this is over 100 watts less power draw. One thing I want to mention is when I'm rendering with the Radeon Pro Duo, my system is still snappy and I can still do other tasks at the same time. Compared to what I'm usually rendering on my GTX 1080s, it seems to really bog down my computer entirely and it's pretty much unusable for any other task. So if you're considering a Radeon Pro Duo yourself, you might also want to consider the size as it is a very big card and runs at about 12 inches long. Um, just something to keep in mind, you want to make sure that you can fit it in your case. The Radeon Pro Duo is really one of the cheapest Pro cards out there for Blender right now, and you really get a lot of performance for your price, so it's definitely a good option if you're looking around the $1,000 range, but if you don't have the money for something like that, there's some really great options from both AMD and Nvidia, like the RX 580 for example, or GTX 1060 if your price range is more around two to $300. And again, there's links in the description to those cards as well if you wanna check them out. But just remember, VRAM is really important and just because it games well doesn't mean it renders well. So this is a perfect example of where a pro card can still render really well and give you access to lots of VRAM and etc. So that's going to do it for the uh, the benchmarks. I hope this video kind of gave you some idea on what you might want in a GPU. The Radeon Pro Duo is definitely a great option for a low-end professional build where you can get lots of power and lots of VRAM for right around a thousand dollar range. Anything else is going to run you more like two thousand and up. So it's a great kind of low-budget professional option and uh, I was really impressed with how it rendered a lot of the scenes in Blender. So that's going to wrap up this video guys. I hope you enjoyed seeing how an AMD card renders in Blender and uh, now you have more options to think of if you're looking to upgrade your GPU. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and you're smart people. Leave a like if you like the video, dislike if you dislike the video, and subscribe if you want to see more videos and uh, I'll see you guys later. Bye!